Imagine this for a second. Right now, while you are watching this, Tesla is quietly working on a battery that is not built around lithium at all. No big launch event, no dramatic stage, just labs, test rigs, and a new chemistry that Elon believes could hit China where it is strongest, not weakest. If this works, it will not only change how fast your car charges. It could change who actually controls the next decade of electric cars. If it fails, China keeps its lead and nothing really changes. China is the most competitive market in the world for EVs. Over the past 18 months, CATL and BYD have tightened their grip on low-cost, high-volume battery production, forcing Tesla to rethink almost every assumption that once gave them an engineering edge. Their factories are massive, efficient, and optimized around cheap LFP cells. For a long time, Tesla tried to outrun them with better tech. Now, aluminum ion is emerging as Musk's counterpunch. A new chemistry that promises ultra-fast charging, cooler operation, and cost per kilowatt hour numbers that might finally undercut China's advantage instead of just chasing it. Elon always says things like, I don't really think about competitors. I just think about making the product as perfect as possible. It sounds calm and simple. But behind that line, his teams are clearly making moves that are all about competition, and this sudden focus on aluminum ion is one of those moves. So what exactly is Elon hiding behind this aluminum ion pivot? Is it just a research project meant for investor slides? or is it a serious attempt to rewiring the entire battery story? Can this new chemistry survive brutal real-world heat, freezing winters, daily fast charging, and the long-distance habits of older drivers who still want to take road trips without worrying? Those are the questions we are going to break down in this video, because the answer will decide whether Tesla can pull ahead again in 2026. Before we go deeper, do one quick thing. Hit subscribe and tap the notification bell so Torque Element can finally reach our first big milestone of 3,000 subscribers. That is the number that unlocks our next deep dive series on Tesla's hidden prototypes and secret battery experiments. If you subscribe right now and help us cross that 3000 line, you become part of the group that pushed this channel into its next chapter. So, what makes aluminum ion such a serious threat to China's battery dominance? It starts with the chemistry. Aluminum ion cells store and release energy through multi-electron reactions, which means they can move more charge per cycle than today's lithium-based cells. In simple words, each reaction inside the battery carries more energy so you can do more work with the same physical space. On paper, that lets a compact 45 to 55 kilowatt hour pack for the 2026 Model 2 hit charging speeds that used to sound impossible. Early lab samples from Tesla's Australian research partners show full charge cycles in under 10 minutes, with small 6 to 12 amp hour cells hitting peak currents above 7,500 milliamp hours without dangerous thermal spikes. Lab cells are not the same as a full vehicle pack but they give a direction and a performance ceiling that LFP suppliers in China cannot hit without major redesigns. China's current supply chain is still heavily tied to LFP. CATL and BYD each produce over 320 gigawatt hours of iron phosphate cells every year. These cells are safe and cheap, which is why they dominate the entry-level segment, but they run into limits. In mass production, LFP often struggles to go beyond about 165 to 175 watt-hours per kilogram. You can optimize packaging but you cannot escape the chemistry. Aluminum ion, at least in Tesla's projections, could enter production in the 185 to 210 watt-hours per kilogram range once casting and electrolyte stabilization scale up. Even if the final number lands near the lower end, it still gives Tesla an edge in pack mass and vehicle weight. That translates into better acceleration and efficiency, key selling points in markets where buyers care how the car feels, not just how cheap it is. But the real fight is cost. Aluminum is the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust. Over the last year, aluminum prices per metric ton have stayed roughly between $1,900 and $2,300, with much less volatility than high-grade lithium carbonate. Lithium prices can swing wildly with demand spikes. Aluminum moves but not with the same chaos. If Tesla can shift even 40% of its smaller vehicles to aluminum ion by late 2026, it could cut around $400 to $700 from battery material costs per car. In a sub-$30,000 price bracket, that is not pocket change. That difference can decide whether Tesla undercuts Chinese imports or gets undercut by them. Of course, aluminum ion is not magic. It brings new problems. These cells generate heat faster under high current charging, especially in packs under 50 kilowatt hours. Internal resistance spikes when the anode takes repeated rapid ion loading, which means Tesla cannot just reuse Model 3 style cooling. They need new thermal paths and smarter loops that are built around aluminum ion behavior. This is where the real engineering work is happening. 
Tesla teams have been testing dual-phase cooling plates and compressible thermal interfaces to keep aluminum ion temperatures in a tight window, roughly 29 to 41 degrees Celsius during fast charging. Keep it lower and performance drops. Let it run hotter and the cells degrade too quickly. If they can hold that narrow band, aluminum ion stops being a lab curiosity and becomes a real production weapon. If that happens, aluminum ion is not just a battery. It is a manufacturing lever strong enough to slow China's rise just as a new price war starts in the US EV market. That is the timing Tesla seems to be targeting. Now, how fast can Tesla actually scale this chemistry? You cannot just pour aluminum ion into existing 4680 lines. The current dry electrode processes were tuned around lithium-based slurries. Aluminum ion needs thicker anode layers, faster electrolyte saturation, and a graphite-free structure that demands tighter humidity control. That means new tooling, new automation rules, and new ways things can go wrong. Leaked briefings suggest Tesla is working on hybrid lines that can produce both 4680 lithium cells and a new 4080 aluminum ion format. The smaller diameter cell gives a shorter thermal path, which helps with cooling when you are pushing extreme charge rates. Even with those changes, Tesla's ramp plan is more aggressive than their early 4680 attempts. Supplier chatter from Nevada and Shanghai points to a combined pilot output of 8 to 12 gigawatt hours in late 2025, scaling to around 38 to 45 gigawatt hours by the end of 2026. That volume could support somewhere in the range of 750,000 to 900,000 Model 2 class vehicles, but only if yields stay above about 85%. Tesla struggled with yield during the first years of 4680 production, running into scrap and process issues. This time they do have one advantage. Aluminum ion uses lower temperature annealing and faster electrolyte injection, cutting cycle time per cell by roughly 40 to 55 seconds compared to lithium when scaled across millions of units. Faster cell production means cheaper cells and higher factory throughput over time. Tesla is targeting compact cars first on purpose. A smaller 45 to 55 kilowatt hour aluminum ion pack charges so quickly that it stresses the charging network in new ways. Today, a typical stall is rated for about 250 kilowatts. Next-generation aluminum ion sessions could demand short bursts beyond 320 or even 350 kilowatts, and that is just for entry-level models. The supercharger hardware and the grid behind it must evolve. New liquid-cooled cables, stronger rectifiers, and bigger buffer storage units are needed to handle those spikes. Tesla's decision to expand big megapack-style installations near high-traffic superchargers suggests they already expect this new load pattern, especially in regions where older grid infrastructure cannot handle sudden peaks whenever a row of Model 2 owners plug in at the same time. Durability is the wild card. Fast charging above 300 kilowatts sounds amazing in a marketing slide, but older drivers who do long trips every month care more about how the pack looks after 8 or 10 years. Tesla's internal data shows aluminum ion retaining about 78 to 82 percent usable capacity after around 1800 high stress cycles, while many LFP packs manage about 2500 cycles before dropping below similar levels. On paper, that looks like a clear weakness. Fewer heavy cycles before noticeable fade. Tesla's answer is that aluminum ion is all about speed. The idea is that because charging sessions are so short, Real drivers do not always lean on high-stress patterns as often as you might assume. They mix home charging, slower sessions and only use full power when needed. In that scenario, Tesla expects most owners to cross between 280,000 and 320,000 kilometers before they see major range loss, which covers the normal life of a compact EV for many people. Now let's bring this down to what you would actually feel if aluminum ion replaces lithium in 2026. The first difference is charging. Today, a 50 to 60 kilowatt hour LFP pack typically needs about 28 to 35 minutes to go from 10 to 80 percent at a strong fast charger. Aluminum ion aims to cut that down to around 9 to 11 minutes for the same energy. That is the difference between we have time for a full meal and grab a coffee, use the restroom, and go. Tesla is also targeting a charging curve that stays above 180 to 200 kilowatts for most of the session instead of falling off early. That means more of the session feels genuinely fast, not just the first few minutes. The second difference is temperature behavior. Aluminum ion works inside a narrower thermal band so Tesla had to create more advanced cooling. Early designs use a two-layer cooling plate with microfluid channels that rip heat away quickly during the hardest part of the charging session, even if it is 37 degrees Celsius outside. The goal is to keep the pack under about 41 degrees, 
the point where long-term aging speeds up. For drivers in hot regions like Arizona, Nevada, Texas, or similar climates elsewhere in the world, that could mean a small EV that does not suddenly slow charging during summer heat waves. Tesla claims this new system can improve top-end cooling efficiency by about 20% compared to the Model 3 system, which reduces the number of times the car has to back off power to protect itself. Cold weather behavior also improves. Aluminum ion will not match the longest-range nickel-based packs, but its discharge curve is more stable. Early tests around minus 12 degrees Celsius show aluminum ion packs losing around 11 to 14 percent efficiency, while many LFP packs lose 18 to 25 percent in the same conditions. For people who live in Canada or northern U.S. states, that means fewer mornings where the range suddenly collapses when the temperature drops. There is also a small but real gain in performance. Aluminum ion packs weigh slightly less. Tesla estimates an 8 to 12 kilogram reduction for a 50 kilowatt hour pack. That might not sound like much but in a compact car, every bit helps. Lower mass means less load on the motors and slightly better response when you punch the accelerator. Tesla expects the 2026 Model 2 with aluminum ion to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in roughly 6.1 to 6.5 seconds, beating many similarly priced Chinese imports that sit closer to 7 or 8 seconds. So now the big question. Is aluminum ion the chemistry that lets Tesla outscale China, or is the gap already too wide? Are we watching the start of a comeback, or just another chapter in a long list of almost their battery ideas? Tell me what you think in the comments. Your view helps guide which part of this story we explore next and which leaks we chase in future videos. And if you found this breakdown useful, do not forget to like this video, subscribe to Torque Element, and hit the notification bell so you never miss what comes next. Help us push Torque Element past that 3000 subscriber goal. When you subscribe you are not just a number. You become part of the group that pushed this channel into its next stage. Share this with a friend who loves EV tech and stay tuned because the next episode is already on the way and what we are seeing behind the scenes might surprise you even more.